In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most frequently used Docker commands. Now, keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list of all the Docker commands. However, these are possibly the most commonly used Docker commands. So, um, as part of uh, this getting started guide, we'll go through a few of these and I'll cover more of the advanced uh, Docker commands in a future video. So, fundamentally, we'll take a look at how you can uh, download and get um, Docker images, uh, how we can list images, um, and more commonly, once you have an image, how can you uh, create and run containers from those images, and then some utility commands um, when working with uh, Docker containers, and finally, um, if uh, particularly if you're developing or testing, chances are you will be removing containers and images uh, all the time, so some commonly used commands. So to get started, first thing you will need to do is, uh, of course, have Docker installed. Uh, if you've not already got Docker installed, uh, take a look at one of my previous videos and uh, it covers how you can install Docker on Ubuntu. Once you have Docker installed, chances are you, uh, you haven't already got any images. Um, so a quick way to test that is to run Docker images, so that's Docker images. Uh, in my case, I've got a bunch of uh, images already. Uh, downloaded, but uh, chances are in your case, if you're just getting started with Docker, uh, you possibly don't have any existing images already downloaded. Uh, so a quick way to find images is uh, to do a search. So if you run Docker search, and let's say we want to um, search for Ubuntu. Okay, that was a typo there, so let's correct that. So we want to search for Docker images uh, uh, against the keyword Ubuntu. So basically uh, what it's doing is it's uh, doing a search on the Docker Hub. So essentially it's the same as uh, going to the Docker Hub website and searching for Ubuntu. And here we can see a bunch of images here. And um, you'll also notice that some of these are, are uh, official images and uh, there's uh, quite a few images that are, have been built uh, by the community so essentially we can uh, see pretty much the, the same information here yeah? so here you can see that it's uh, this is the official Ubuntu Debian based Linux OS and um, uh, same information like stars and if it's official etc uh, so uh, once you've identified the image um, the next thing you can do is uh, you can pull that image uh, to your local system uh, and again this is an example where it's pointing to uh, the the docker hub but you can point it to your internal company's uh, repository as well so if you want to get that image uh, you need to run docker pull and ubuntu uh, if you run that command it will download the image and depending on the size of the image and your bandwidth uh, it might take a, a couple of minutes uh, to maybe about 30-40 minutes. Again, the Ubuntu image is uh, very light, so it should be downloaded fairly quickly, like in about a minute or two. So once you have the image installed uh, or downloaded, you you can finally access that uh, in your catalog of images. So that's Docker images, and uh, in my case, since I have a lot of images already, I'm just uh, using it as a filter. So uh, here I've got the Ubuntu image already. So, uh, last thing I'll quickly point out is, um, I, along with the image name, you can also specify the tag. So, tag as in uh, the version. So, if you don't specify the tag, it will by default download the latest image. Now, uh, we've not already uh, run any container. So, the next step is to actually create a container. So, um, let's run Docker. And uh, one of the ways that we can run a container is, uh, now that we have an image Ubuntu, so let's actually run Ubuntu and um, you'll notice that it does autocomplete when you uh, press tab. Um, and let's say for example uh, in the bin folder of the Ubuntu image we want to run uh, the echo command and hello world. So you'll notice that um, it's, uh, it's done what was expected, so it's launched that um, image and um, it uh, ran the hello world so again not nothing terribly uh, exciting or useful but um, a few things that uh, we can note here so uh, to see a list of um, 
containers that are currently running, you can run the uh, this command here uh, to provide a list. So uh, again, in our case here, since um, this was an example where the container launched this command and immediately exited, there's nothing actively running. So the other way you can take a look at is uh, com I mean containers that have already completed. So that's Docker PSA. Uh, so here you'll notice that this was the, um, uh, the container that we launched uh, just a few minutes ago. So it's saying that it was created 46 seconds ago and it basically ran uh, you know, just about a second and exited, um, exited with uh, code zero. That basically means it gracefully exited. And uh, by default, um, um, Docker will provide uh, a random name. Uh, it's quite creative, the names that it comes up with, but in many cases, you might want to uh, create a name uh, for that container. So as an example, let's, uh, let's run the same uh, image again. So this time Docker run and uh, let's provide it a name. So let me just put it as Melvin uh, as an example. Um, and uh, this time around we want to run it uh, in an interactive uh, session so we will want to um, run bash interactively so the way to do that is uh, to specify i and t um, and uh, again we can specify the name of the image and finally the command that's uh, bin bash so let me open uh, uh, listed in a separate um, window here. So here again, it's let me increase the size uh, easier to read. So here, Docker PS. So now we can actually see that these are the list of uh, containers that are currently running. So you'll not remember that we specified a name here. Um, so now we are within that uh, container. We can run standard um, Linux commands here, out of the box Linux commands here, and you'll notice that we are um, within that container, not in the host. All right, so what else? Uh, yeah, the other thing where very often that you might uh, come across is the need to know uh, the details of the image, um, such as the IP. So instead of not, uh, going inside the image itself, I'm sorry, the container, uh, we can run Docker inspect and uh, remember we give the name yeah so now one so here we can find a lot of the information around that uh, container itself and most likely um, you will need to run this command uh, quite often to know for example the IP address of uh, that container um, the other commands so let's say for example you have uh, you're within a container and you want to exit from that con container just uh, the the bash but not uh, uh, you know exit the container itself or stop the container a simple shortcut is to press ctrl p and q so you'll notice if i press ctrl p and q i'm back here at uh, the prompt at the host level and uh, the container should still be running Docker ps so you'll notice that uh, the container is uh, still running it hasn't uh, exited and uh, if you have a running container, the way to um, connect back or attach back is uh, to uh, run docker exec to execute. And uh, again, if I go back to this window here, docker exec, and the name of the container was mal1, and run a command, bash, oops, uh, bin and bash. So again, I'm back in the container. Now, very often um, you'll find that uh, once you have a container, you will want to uh, maybe move some files into the container, say for example, if it's a config file or something like that. So let's say for instance, I have this file here, uh, test, uh, test1.txt, it's in my host uh, machine and I want to move that into a container. The way you can do that is uh, run the docker copy command, so that's uh, docker cp and the name of the file test one and uh, specify the name of the container and uh, here i can specify the location and the file so if i just want to copy it over at the root level i can do so like this so copy the file and uh, now if we try to attach um, 
uh, again connect to the uh, the the container, and you'll notice that um, this is how the file was copied from the post into the container. Finally, once you have worked with uh, the containers, chances are you might want to delete the container, uh, or for that matter, even delete the images. Uh, so the way we can do that is um, if uh, if you have exited that image. So let's say Docker uh, PS. Okay. So here we have a bunch of images. So let's say, for instance, let's try and uh, remove that image. So if we no longer want to keep that and utilize that space, uh, so we can run the Docker image command. So Docker image and shark, or which was um, the random name that uh, gets generated if you don't specify a name, and that's how you can remove. Uh, previously used containers um, very often and on occasions of course uh, you can you might want to remove the image itself so you remember we downloaded the Ubuntu image uh, or maybe you can create your own images custom images and if you wanted to uh, remove an image it's RMI hence the name of the image and then finally um, on occasions uh, you may have created many containers and you wanted to stop and remove all the containers Typically when you are doing a lot of uh, dev uh, integration testing and uh, on occasions, um, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say you will do that in production but chances are if you are learning you will want to um, remove, uh, stop and remove all the containers. So this is a quick uh, uh, tip here so you can list and uh, uh, stop all the containers and you can uh, then finally remove all the uh, containers. So right now it should not give you any uh, uh, previously run containers or for that matter any running containers. Alright, so that's it for this uh, quick getting started guide to using Docker. Uh, in future videos we'll cover some of the more advanced uh, Docker keywords, uh, uh, sorry, Docker commands and concepts. Thanks everyone for watching. Do subscribe and like for future updates.